So our final speaker of the evening um, is Olin Hyde. And Olin, and I want to get this right, Olin's LinkedIn description talks, describes him as fostering rapid adoption of disruptive technologies. So, and that's, I think that's a great ending place for, for this evening, um, because that's what we're talking about. That's what we saw with Google, with Amazon, with, with Qualcomm, is these new technologies that really change how we do things. So Owen now um, runs a company that does open source big data and artificial intelligence, and he's going to talk to you about how you can bring those things to do rapid, disruptive adoption in government. Thanks, Ben. Um, I'm Owen Hyde. Uh, get your phones out and please uh, text or tweet me at any time. Um, uh, and Glue uh, is an open source uh, artificial intelligence platform to accelerate medical research. So um, in our very first prototype, uh, we helped uh, discover a new pathway for type 1 diabetes that's being published right now. Um, we are a cheaper version of IBM Watson, and we're a local company. And the whole idea that I want to get by today is we have to define two things. What is intelligence and what is artificial? Artificial is it's engineered. Intelligence is the ability to model, explain, and predict reality. And so that's what we're going to use as the word for intelligence. And the big idea is that it can augment human intelligence. So our team uh, has actually delivered solutions to more than 100 Fortune, uh, uh, one, four, Fortune 500 corporations. These are some of the places that we've done work uh, in artificial intelligence. Um, there, some of them are household names. Um, and so what we've learned is that AI can be used in both good and bad. It's a dual purpose technology. And it's here, it's moving rapidly, and you have a choice of either using it to your advantage or becoming a victim. And that's really simple. And we want you to use it because we want government to use it for good. And the possibilities are amazing what we can do. So, AI is a big part of your life already, whether you realize it or not. It powers uh, your phone. It powers uh, your credit score. More than 70% of all trades on Wall Street are done using machine learning and AI algorithms. So it, it defines our economy. Uh, it also is used by bad people. So the notion of a single hacker trying to steal 70 million target uh, credit card numbers is a myth. Intelligent agents, AI entities, are the ones that do a lot of the, uh, the cyber crime. And we, we've worked on those problems as well. So AI is all about understanding complexity. And as policymakers, you know your problems are complex. If you pull on one string, it may affect 100 other strings. And this is the power of AI, is to be able to understand every relationship between every variable that you're analyzing. The problem with humans is, is that we have something called bounded rationality. So studies show that humans can only really understand seven variables at a time, plus or minus two. This is called bounded rationality. And this explains why voters tend to pick one or two issues to vote on. And we know that policies have to look at the whole big picture. And you can't do that with a human brain. You need an AI brain. See, our brains evolved linearly. We evolved in a world where we had limited access to data, limited access to information, and we augmented those limited data with emotions, with social awareness. And so just like a child learns to work, uh, walk one step at a time, the problem is data and technology grow exponentially. 90% of the world's data has been created in the past 24 months. Human knowledge now doubles every four years. So you cannot possibly keep up with these exponential curves doing it one step at a time. The gap between the exponential nature of technology and the linearity of human thought is stress. As entrepreneurs, we look at the difference between these curves as opportunities. If you're not thinking this way, you're called a victim. The, and what's really important for you to realize is that there's a life cycle adoption of technology. If you're over on this side, innovators and early adopters, you're called a winner. If you're over here and you're the last to use it, you're called a victim. So you as policymakers have a choice of whether you're going to adopt new technologies and use them to advantage, or whether they're going to be used against you. And there's no choice because technology moves at its own pace. MIT and Oxford just did a study that was published last year that showed 47% of jobs are at risk or going to be eliminated through automation. 
And what's amazing to me is the human brain is really good at emotional intelligence, and those are the type of jobs that are going to be here. The ones that are not going to be here are the ones that are analytical. So I think those numbers are wrong. I think every job is going to be affected by AI in the very near future. Today's intelligent agents, what we use AI to build, learn without programming. They can do amazing things that were previously computers we didn't think they could do. So it can solve some really interesting policy problems. Um, and it's really a question of what type of policy problems you want to apply and look at the data and analyze the data so that you can make the right emotional decision based upon the, uh, the analytical factors. So whether it's water, emergency services, or development. And the single best thing you can do as a policy, trying to make this actionable, is make data open. Because with open data, we can innovate. Data is the lifeblood for these type of innovations. And if it's open, good and bad people get to use it. And the way things work in the open source world is the good people police the bad people. So a lot of other cities and uh, government entities have used AI in very interesting ways. Right now, the uh, CDC uses it to detect and prevent the spread of disease. New York City did an amazing project that radically reduced traffic. Um, it's something that you really have a choice of using it now. And San Diego has an incredible brain trust to bring to bear. Uh, we are really a powerhouse in the world of uh, artificial intelligence. Just, they're just some of the few startups and, and established companies that are out there doing really cool stuff. And AI people want to help. We really do. We're geeky people that spend too much time in front of a computer. We like to solve interesting problems. Here's three things that I think San Diego could do today. First, have a hackathon, an app challenge to build apps using AI. There's a lot of open source tools that you can do that with. Secondly, school of, excuse me, school of data. The government must educate itself. You cannot count on people like us to educate you. And lastly, I think the last one was open data. Um, so please, uh, contact me if you have any questions or comments. Uh, we're here to help. and. Uh, I think it's great that you're all here because you're actually over on this side of the curve if you're here tonight. Thank you.